why mycoplasma or why MHIO? Um, MHIO is considered the primary agent of the uh, exotic pneumonia in pigs. Uh, mycoplasma is, infects the epithelium of the respiratory tract of the pig and it causes damage in this epithelium. We consider that mycoplasma is an enhancer of the, of the so-called porcine respiratory complex because of the concern that mycoplasmas have in the production phases. Although they're not regulated, uh, they cause some great economic uh, implications. So with that, we, have a, we recognize mycoplasmas that are involved in several species, uh, or there are several species of mycoplasmas, we say, that are involved with pigs, um, and their virulence varies quite a bit with that. Uh, we also recognize that we find them everywhere in just about every country as well. So our focus was going to be primarily on the four mycoplasmas. Mycoplasma, how pneumonia, which we know causes lung lesions and is of great importance in production phase. Uh, mycoplasma, how synovia and hyorhinus, which also cause some lameness and of great uh, implication in the field for the veterinarians and producers. And then we included mycoplasma flocularia because we recognize the uh, cross reactivity, although Mycoplasma flocularia by itself is not recognized as really creating big problems in pigs. Uh, serology is a very useful technique. Uh, we are proposing a new ELISA. This is ELISA is based on uh, a structure of indirect ELISA, but by using uh, uh, two uh, antigens. One uh, antigen, micro, micro, mycoplasma antigenic fraction, uh, uh, which is uh, considered as an, antigen, as an antigen negative, and a um, high enriched specific fra fraction that we consider a positive antigen. Uh, um, the idea is to use both in the same plate and then to subtract from the positive reaction the negative reaction activity in order to obtain an indirect ELISA which is uh, more specific and in these conditions maybe it could be more sensible. So our purpose was to not only test serology, but at this time there was the development of the oral fluids that was also being implemented and to see if we could detect some antibodies via oral fluids as well. So we sought to measure pig antibody response and the level of cross-reactivity in serum and pen-based oral fluids after challenge with the four species of swine mycoplasmas. And then serologically evaluating the commercially available uh, assays that we had at that time, there was question about how much cross-reactivity. And again, these are CDCD pigs and we got just four pigs per group. Um, these assays do detect, do start to detect a lot earlier. So day eight, we started to, to get some positives. Um, and then you can say a little bit of variability on um, how well some of them responded or how quickly they, they turned seropositive. At the first, in the first trial, we uh, worked with, uh, with samples coming from a trial of experimental infection. Uh, no negatives that were vaccinated on day zero and revaccinated on day 21, and then they were infected on day 70. The animals were bleed on day 0, 21, 42, 70, and 88. The animals were vaccinated with different groups, with different vaccines, the normal vaccines present in the market, and there were, there were also some uh, groups who were not vaccinated and infected and not vaccinated, not infected. Uh, these samples were categorized in uh, three different status. Status corresponding to not vaccinated, uh, non-infected, only vaccinated samples coming from animals, only vaccinated and uh, samples coming from animals vaccinated and also infected. In terms of sensitivity and specificity, uh, we uh, observed that no kid has any specificity problem. And, uh, but in terms of sensitivity, the differences were mainly focused again in the vaccinated samples. The samples coming from vaccinated animals were detected with a sensitivity of the same, uh, around 70 with C. ELISA, around 40 with uh, CIP test, and uh, uh, below 15 with E. ELISA. Vaccinated and infected, the agreement between, between this, this kit was absolute, and in this case, the results were uh, uh, poor. We are moving to the samples in the field. In this case, we defined 
a panel of samples uh, thanks to Maria Peters from the University of Minnesota. Uh, she selected uh, a group of farms that uh, from the historical status or from the, their knowledge they considered that it could be classified inside these categories. Vaccinated infected, vaccinated not infected, not infected, uh, uh, not vaccinated not infected and not vaccinated not infected. The samples coming from Minnesota, from South Dakota and from Iowa. Uh, the idea was to test the, kit, the three kits again by using this new panel of samples coming from real conditions, not from the lab. In this case, um, for this analysis, uh, maybe the only conclusion was that we obtained it by FIP test only six samples inside the doubtful category, by the, ind the indirect ELISA 12 and with CLISA 49. It means that uh, we're more consistent results with the FIP test. Uh, if we move to figures of sensitivity and specificity, in this case, uh, the best sensitivity was obtained with the tip test, followed by uh, ILISA and CLISA. To have a better sensitivity by using the CLISA, we have to use the second cutoff, the low cutoff, and in these conditions, the results were better than this, but in these conditions, the kit began to have some problems of specificity. It seems that uh, then for ZIP test or ILI, the specificity was the same by using the two cutoffs.